This is a wet weather spring right there where the prey cord grass is growing. And the spring has stopped going across the road, but for all of uh, March, April, May, winter time, you know, there's water coming across that road and going down uh, parallel to the path we, we took and going into the creek. So in the spring, this here is a wet little spot is what it is. Prairie cord grass grows in wet areas. So I took about, um, I, I took a dozen plants and the kids and I planted them in there about five years ago. And it, it gets, it doubles its size each year. It's still not filled in, there's holes in between, but I have confidence it will fill in into that wet area. That prairie cord grass is, uh, it's got roots, rhizominous roots that are woven together like a rug. And I just see the wonderful adaptation for growing in that wet area and livestock being able to go over that and to eat it. The livestock do eat it. They tend not to eat it very low to the ground. You can see it's got a lot of stem there and they would rather just eat the leaf. Prairie cord grass kind of tends to grow more in monocultures than some of the other grasses because of these underground rhizomes. But it's an amazing warm season grasses because it's growing in the water. It's warmer right there. And that plant for a warm season grass, it's greening up and growing right along when fescue and the other native cool season grasses are growing. And it's just, it's one of the first warm season grasses to seed head out. It's got, it's just starting to, to seed out. There's some sedges in front of it. Uh, there's some uh, foul manna grass that's got a seed head on and there's more in the shade. And then the, the eastern gamma grass. So this here is just a wet bottom all spring long and some of the diversity that's growing uh, with that. So, and up here we've done a woodland restoration. So we went through here and took a lot of the trees out. We, we actually didn't have our drone spreader at that time. So we la lined up about four people with a bucket full of seed and we went back and forth and we seeded that woodland. Since then, we've done a little bit more logging in it and opened it up a little bit more when we had some loggers here. Uh, and because we just saw that we needed uh, a little bit more opening to get the warm season grasses going. We make different mixes. If it's a south facing slope, those soils are usually thinner and drier because of more geologic type erosion that you can have going on. Whereas the north facing slopes tend to have more soil because they would stay frozen longer and they just don't freeze and thaw, which causes that disturbance. So the north facing slopes, I usually like a little bit more, more trees left and I use a little bit different mix, you know, for that area. So you see there's different diversity in different places. And you know, this is what we have tried to do is we've tried to learn to grow these plants and all these different types of diversity that we have so that we can uh, help our customer pick, you know, for what his goals and objectives are, you know, what's best. So the purple, little purple pink blooming plant, that is a, a bergamot. And that's actually a plant that uh, isn't as palatable to our livestock. Uh, in fact, it may just be kind of nibbled on more medicinally. Uh, it has antimicrobial compounds in it that, that, may be more, that may be important for making some nutrients available to plants. I keep trying to follow the soil health movement that has started and some of these, um, some nutrients in our soil that the plants need are made available in an anaerobic state. And that may be why you want some of these plants that are not as palatable to livestock is because they slow down microbial decay and they make uh, sulfur, they make uh, zinc, they make some nutrients that are available in the anaerobic state available to the plant. And these are some of the things that we're trying to learn the detail of, you know, the, these plants. I really wanted to learn about diverse native savanna restoration. So that's, that's what we're going towards over here is savanna restoration. And this here is its second growing season. 
uh, part of the problems that we've had in doing our restoration is if you don't have enough disturbance in the woods, uh, it's hard to get a stand of grass. So I learned that that disturbance actually releases some of the nutrients from the soil that otherwise aren't made available. So when you don't have the disturbance of grazing or logging, this here stand has been much, much slower coming on. It's taken a lot more years to get that. And we, dig our, we did our disturbance with a chainsaw, not with a logging operation that had the tires going across it. So, uh, so th that's one thing that we've learned, you know, with our, with our restoration. And we really, we've done some of the NRCS woodland restorations, uh, that practice, but we really don't like to use it anymore because it just doesn't get enough disturbance to get a stand of stuff real quick. So we, we've been doing these here, uh, Savannah restorations here on our own is what we've been doing. Uh, as I said, we've put a little bit more river oats, which is a native cool season grass. That is one of the latest cool season grasses to seed head out. It will even seed head out after the prairie cord grass does, which is a warm season. So you kind of, you know, we kind of divide things by warm season and cool season, you know, because we want to keep the solar collector going. We want to, we want to, to keep that going as long as possible. But you can't always tell by looking, you know, how these plants, uh, whether they're cool season or, or they're warm season. So we got, again, we're trying to vegetate this stream right behind you with uh, plants that uh, uh, tolerate growing in that wet area. We don't have quite as good a stand of foul manna grass as what we will, uh, you know, it takes a little time for it to fill in. When you cross this draw here with the, uh, when the driver crosses that draw, if you look upstream, you'll see the foul manna grass is kind of closing in and we're about to vegetate that whole stream there. So we're pleased with the way that's working.